Are you over 60 and wondering why walking, which once felt like enough, no longer gives you the same energy, strength, or health benefits? Walking is excellent. It keeps joints moving, improves circulation, and clears the mind. But here is what most people over 60 do not realize. Walking alone is not the most efficient way to preserve muscle, burn fat, and extend longevity. In fact, after 60, your body goes through profound shifts in metabolism, hormones, and muscle physiology that demand more than just daily steps. Here is what is really going on inside your body. By the time you reach your 60s, you are losing muscle at a faster rate than you can replace it. This process is called sarcopenia, and it is driven by hormonal changes, reduced protein synthesis, and sometimes years of low activity. The problem is not just cosmetic. Muscle is what drives your metabolism, protects your bones, balances blood sugar, and even keeps your brain sharp through myokines, signaling molecules released when muscles contract. When muscle mass declines, so does your ability to burn fat efficiently, regulate blood sugar, and maintain balance. That is why people in their 60s often complain of stubborn weight gain around the belly, lower energy, and a higher risk of falls or fractures. Let me explain this with a simple analogy. Think of your muscle tissue as the engine of your body. When you were in your 20s, that engine was powerful and efficient, burning through fuel easily. But in your 60s, if you do not actively maintain and upgrade that engine, it begins to shrink and lose horsepower. Walking keeps the engine idling, but it does not rev it up. What the research shows is that after the age of 60, you need specific types of exercise that send a stronger signal to your muscles, bones, and metabolism. Signals that say, stay strong, keep burning fuel, do not shut down. Now, here is the encouraging part. You do not need a gym membership, heavy equipment, or hours of training to unlock these benefits. What you do need are the right five forms of exercise, all backed by science and even surgeon approved, that are proven to outperform walking for people over 60. These exercises not only preserve muscle and protect joints, but also activate deep physiological mechanisms that keep you younger at a cellular level. In this session, we are going to explore them together. I will show you how each of these five exercises taps into different aspects of your physiology, whether it is building fast twitch muscle fibers, improving balance and coordination, lowering cortisol, or enhancing insulin sensitivity. More importantly, I will break down exactly how you can incorporate these movements into your daily routine, even if you have joint pain, limited mobility, or no equipment at all. So, if you are over 60 and serious about extending your health span, not just your lifespan, this will be one of the most important conversations you listen to today. By the end, you will walk away with a clear science-backed plan to train your body smarter, not harder, and to finally see results that walking alone simply cannot deliver. When we talk about healthy aging, most people immediately think of heart health, blood pressure, or maybe bone density. But here is what research is showing us. Muscle is actually the organ of longevity. It is not just tissue that moves your body around. It is an active, endocrine organ that talks to every other system in your body through chemical messengers called myokins. These myokins reduce inflammation, improve insulin sensitivity, and even protect the brain from decline. Here is what is really going on inside your body after 60. Every decade past your 30s, you lose roughly 3 to 8% of your muscle mass if you are not actively maintaining it. By the time you reach your 60s, that loss accelerates and it is no longer just about strength. Muscle is what keeps your metabolism running. When muscle declines, so does your ability to burn fat. Blood sugar regulation suffers because muscles are the primary storage site for glucose. Without that storage, excess sugar circulates in the blood, raising insulin, promoting fat storage, and fueling inflammation. Let me explain this with a simple analogy. Think of your muscles as sponges. When they are large and healthy, they soak up glucose from your bloodstream quickly, keeping your blood sugar balanced. But when the sponge shrinks, as it does when you lose muscle, there is less capacity to absorb glucose. That extra glucose lingers in the bloodstream, forcing your pancreas to release more insulin. Over time, this leads to insulin resistance, 
belly fat, and metabolic slowdown. Now, here is the part that most people miss. Walking, while wonderful for circulation and mood, does not send a strong enough signal to stop muscle loss. Your muscles need resistance. They need to be challenged in order to grow or even just to maintain themselves. A recent study published in the Journal of the American Geriatric Society showed that older adults who practiced resistance-based exercise just two times per week significantly improved muscle mass, reduced insulin resistance, and even lowered their risk of falls compared to those who only walked. What does this mean for you practically? It means that exercises which use your body weight, resistance bands, or light dumbbells are far more protective for your metabolism and longevity than walking alone. For example, chair squats, wall push-ups, and resistance band rows all activate large muscle groups in ways walking cannot. And the best part is, you do not need heavy weights. The goal is not to bulk up, but to keep your muscle fibers awake, active, and responsive. If this is helpful so far, consider subscribing. I post content like this every day to help you understand how your body really works and how to support it naturally. Now, when you add resistance exercise, you are not just building muscle, you are also strengthening bones through the stress placed on them, reducing osteoporosis risk. You are stimulating the release of growth hormone and testosterone in small but meaningful ways, both of which decline after 60 but are crucial for repair and vitality. You are also improving balance and coordination because these movements recruit stabilizing muscles that walking simply does not engage. So the takeaway here is clear. Walking is good, but resistance training is essential if you want to preserve muscle, metabolism, and independence after 60. Without it, the sponge shrinks, metabolism slows, and aging accelerates. With it, you keep your metabolic engine strong, your body leaner, and your brain sharper. When most people think about protecting their heart after 60, the first advice they hear is go for a walk. And yes, walking improves circulation, lowers blood pressure, and helps with stress. But here's what the research shows walking alone does not provide the intensity needed to fully challenge your cardiovascular system or to stimulate your mitochondria, the tiny power plants inside your cells that generate energy. If you want to truly protect your heart, lungs, and energy levels, you need to go a step beyond walking. The exercise that does this is interval training. Now, do not let the word interval intimidate you. This is not about sprinting like an Olympic athlete. Interval training simply means alternating between short bursts of effort and periods of recovery. For example, instead of walking at the same slow pace for 30 minutes, you might walk at a brisk pace for one minute, then slow down for two minutes and repeat. That small shift in rhythm forces your heart and lungs to adapt in ways steady walking never will. Here is what is really happening inside your body when you practice intervals. During the burst phase, your heart pumps harder, your lungs draw in more oxygen, and your mitochondria are forced to produce energy more quickly. Then, during the recovery phase, your system resets and prepares for the next burst. This cycle of stress and recovery trains your cardiovascular system to become more efficient. It is like upgrading the wiring in your house so it can handle more electricity without burning out. Studies from the European Heart Journal have shown that interval training in older adults not only improves cardiovascular fitness more than steady walking, but also enhances mitochondrial density. That means your cells literally create more power plants, giving you more energy at rest and during activity. In fact, older adults who practiced interval walking for just 12 weeks improved their aerobic capacity and blood sugar control significantly more than those who walked at a steady pace. Now, here is the practical application. You do not need a treadmill or special equipment. You can use a hallway, a park, or even your living room. Try this simple protocol. Warm up with two minutes of easy walking, then do one minute of brisk walking where you feel your breathing quicken, but you can still talk. Follow that with two minutes of slow walking to recover. Repeat this cycle five to eight times. That gives you a powerful 20 minute workout that is safe, effective, and surgeon approved. And remember, interval training does not have to be only walking. You can apply the same principle to cycling, swimming, or even simple at-home movements like marching in place. 
The key is alternating effort and recovery so your heart is challenged without being overstrained. Here's why this matters so much after 60. Your mitochondria naturally decline with age. That is one of the main reasons people feel tired, sluggish, or unable to recover from exertion. Interval training is one of the only natural ways proven to stimulate new mitochondrial growth. More mitochondria means more energy, more resilience, and a lower risk of chronic disease. So, while walking is a good baseline, interval walking or interval movement takes you to the next level. It gives your heart a workout, it trains your cells to make more energy, and it helps regulate blood sugar more effectively. That is why it is one of the most important upgrades you can make to your daily routine. If interval training strengthens your heart and energizes your cells, resistance training is what rebuilds your body from the inside out. After 60, the single biggest risk to independence is muscle loss. And here is the truth. Muscle loss is not just about weakness, it is about metabolic decline. Without resistance-based exercise, your body loses the ability to respond to insulin, burn fat efficiently, and maintain stability. Here is what is really going on inside your body. Every time you perform a resistance movement, whether it is pushing, pulling, or lifting your own body weight, you are sending a signal to your muscles that they must adapt. That signal activates what scientists call mTOR pathways. Think of mTOR as a master switch inside your cells. When it is activated, your body increases protein synthesis, repairing and rebuilding muscle fibers. At the same time, your bones receive stress signals that stimulate them to become stronger and denser. Let me explain with a simple analogy. Imagine your muscles as a construction site. Without resistance training, the site shuts down, workers go home, and the building slowly deteriorates. But when you introduce resistance exercise, you flip the power switch back on. The workers return, the machinery starts up, and the building is repaired and even expanded. That is what resistance exercise does at the cellular level. It turns construction back on in your body. A study published in the Journal of Bone and Mineral Research found that older adults who performed resistance training at least twice per week not only increased their muscle strength but also improved bone mineral density and reduced fracture risk. Another study in diabetes care showed that resistance training enhances insulin sensitivity in older adults, lowering the risk of type 2 diabetes and helping the body burn fat more efficiently. Here's the practical part. You do not need to lift heavy barbells, bodyweight squats, wall push-ups, seated knee extensions, or resistance band rows are enough to send the signal. The goal is to challenge the muscle to the point of mild fatigue. For example, if you can comfortably do 10 chair squats, aim for 12. That little push past comfort is what tells the muscle we need to grow. If this is helpful so far, consider subscribing. I post content like this every day to give you practical, science-based tools to keep your body strong and your health optimized. Beyond the metabolic benefits, resistance training also changes your hormones. It stimulates small but meaningful increases in growth hormone and testosterone, both of which decline with age. These hormones are essential for tissue repair, fat burning, and vitality. Resistance movements also lower cortisol over time, balancing the stress response that often contributes to belly fat and poor sleep in older adults. The key takeaway is this. Resistance training is not optional after 60. It is your body's way of keeping the metabolic engine alive, protecting your bones, and signaling to every system in your body that you are still strong, active, and vital. Walking will not do this, but just 10 to 20 minutes of resistance-based movements two to three times per week can make the difference between frailty and independence. When you ask people in their 60s or 70s what they fear most about aging, many will say memory loss or chronic disease. But do you know what often robs independence first? Falls. A simple fall can result in a fracture, surgery, and months of recovery, sometimes a permanent loss of mobility. And here is the important part. Most falls are not random accidents. They are the result of declining balance, weak stabilizer muscles, and slower reaction times. This is why balance and stability training is one of the most powerful forms of exercise you can do after 60. Here is what is really happening inside your body. 
As you age, the tiny stabilizing muscles around your ankles, knees, hips, and core naturally weaken. Your inner ear, which controls balance, also becomes less responsive. Add in reduced vision and slower nerve signaling, and the risk of losing balance rises dramatically. Walking, while beneficial, does little to train these stabilizing systems. Balance must be practiced directly. Let me explain with a simple analogy. Think of your body as a tree. The trunk may look strong, but if the roots are shallow, one strong gust of wind can topple it. Balance training deepens your roots. It strengthens the smaller muscles and neural pathways that keep you upright when life throws unexpected gusts of wind, like tripping on a curb or slipping on a wet floor. What the research shows is powerful. A study in the British Journal of Sports Medicine found that older adults who practiced targeted balance exercises at least three times per week reduced their risk of falls by nearly 35%. Another study showed that even short daily sessions of balance practice improved coordination, confidence in movement, and reduced fear of falling, which itself is a major risk factor because hesitation can increase instability. Now, let us talk about how to put this into action. Balance training does not require a gym or fancy equipment. Simple exercises like standing on one leg while holding a chair walking heel to toe in a straight line or practicing gentle yoga poses can significantly strengthen stabilizers. Core exercises such as seated knee lifts or side leg raises also contribute by supporting spinal alignment and stability. One powerful protocol you can try is the tandem stance. Stand with one foot directly in front of the other, heel to toe, as if you are on a tightrope. Hold for 20 seconds, then switch feet. At first, use a wall or chair for support. Over time, as your confidence improves, you can reduce support. This trains your nervous system and your stabilizing muscles simultaneously. Here is why this matters so much. Maintaining balance is not only about avoiding injury, it is about confidence. When you know your body can react and stay upright, you move more freely, stay active, and keep engaging with life. On the other hand, if you fear falling, you move less, your muscles weaken further, and the cycle of decline accelerates. Balanced training breaks that cycle. So remember this, walking builds endurance. Resistance training builds strength. But balanced training protects your independence. It is the foundation that keeps all other forms of exercise safe and effective as you age. One of the most common frustrations I hear from people in their 60s is this, I eat healthy, I walk every day, but I still cannot lose the belly fat. The reason is not just diet, it is physiology. After 60, your cells often become resistant to insulin, the hormone that regulates blood sugar. When insulin stays high, your body stores more fat, especially around the midsection, and it becomes harder to tap into fat as fuel. The good news is there is a natural way to reset this process, and it is through short bursts of higher intensity movement. Here is what